I know that we say this like all the time, but this is really true. We're heading to one of our all time favorite places here in Alaska. <laughs> we are heading to China Hot Springs for some hot springs and the ice museum and a whole bunch of other things. It is a really awesome place to visit. It's just outside of Fairbanks, maybe about an hour or so. I can't wait to soak and freeze all at the same time. <laughs> all right, let's hit the road. Welcome to the New States Go North. We're Howard and Caitlin New State, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been living on the road for the past three years, traveling through North America and beyond. This summer, we've been sharing our journey across the last frontier with you. From the Kenai Peninsula to the interior of Alaska, come along as we show you why the 49th state should be a must visit on your list. We've got our campsite, we're in number five. And it's right by the water, pretty sweet spot. And then what we're gonna change into our duds maybe, Caitlin? I guess. Do some hot springs. It's pretty chilly here today, despite the gorgeous weather. So I think it'll be very nice for some hot spring soaking. We're cold. <laughs> 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 we were walking around the campground to pick out our spot. And I was like, it's cold up here. Yeah, and to give you an idea, I mean, it's only the middle of August, right? I mean, today yeah. is the 17th? 18th. 18. See, I even lost track of what day it was. <laughs> so the campground is first come, first serve. They do not take reservations online. It's only 20 bucks a night though, and you're in walking distance to all the amenities at the resort, which is great. All right, we're all set up now. We've got our campsite just the way we like it. <laughs> Mostly set up. <laughs> and we have so many amazing activities coming up in the next couple days. Yeah, we've got like horseback riding and ATVs and all kinds of exciting things. But first, we are going to go grab a meal at the on-site restaurant, which features a lot of items that are grown here on property because it's greenhouse to table, which we'll tell you a lot more about coming up. And then I think we're going to get some relaxation on in the hot springs. The hot springs are open until 1145 at night. Yeah. That's a perfect nightcap. China Hot Springs was discovered over 100 years ago in 1905 by two brothers, and by 1911 the property had an established bathhouse, stables, and several small cabins for visitors. Today, it's a resort destination for both summer and winter activities, complete with a hotel, even more cabins, massage therapists, multiple pools, a restaurant and bar, and everything from horseback riding to aurora viewing. Part of what makes China Hot Springs so special is all the different ways they use the hot water in their operations and services, from heating their buildings to their greenhouse to even generating 100% of their own electricity through geothermal energy. It's a lot more than just a pool of hot water. They do offer daily free tours of their geothermal plant to learn even more about their sustainability efforts. We are well nourished for some important soaking. Yes. And it's just starting to get like dusk out, which is kind of funny because it's 10 o'clock at night. So when we were here in 2019, we came to the hot springs from the RV and Howard forgot a very important item needed for hot springs. I forgot my bathing suit. <laughs> but as luck would have it, he came out to go back to the RV to get his bathing suit and there was a moose drinking out of the pool. Yeah, so they have these natural pools that are next to the hot springs for us and that's exclusively for the animals, and that's where they work. Okay, so we just got all checked in. We have our towels, and they do have lockers that you can use inside, but they always want you to take your shoes off before you go into the locker room so you don't track the dirt, and mud, and rocks, and all that stuff in. So we always just bring a pair of flip-flops to put on. Oh, thank you. And take your street shoes off. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. Get all the steam though. Oh, remember that one up there too? That's the hot tub. Yeah. Oh man, let's do that in a minute. I love this though. Look, they're uh, traffic lights, like um, pedestrian lights. <laughs> Don't walk. All right, let's go get warm. <laughs> it's <is> chilly. <laughs> and he went in. Nice. Oh my gosh. The steam and the lights, the fountains. This is a perfect time of night to come. I really like that it kind of slowly eases you in. Like we're on a gentle decline. Oh, Ah. It's like a like rocky, sandy bottom. It's really nice on your feet.
is so nice. <laughs> Our first soak. <laughs> for the hot tub. You know, because hot springs aren't enough. You have to have hot tubs too. Can't imagine doing this in the snow. <laughs> After being in the hot spring, which is much hotter naturally, this doesn't even feel like that hot. It's interesting with hot springs, right? Like, because there's different, like, almost currents of hot water going through it. Yeah, because it's an entirely it. natural hot spring pool. So it's fed by the hot spring. And so, yeah, it's like just these little pockets. Mm -hmm. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's like, surprise, hot. Hot spring surprise. Ooh. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, y'all, look at this fashion. Just got our safety helmets on here <laughs> because we are getting ready to go on a horseback trail ride through the mountains. Okay, now, Kaylin, when was the last time you were on a horse? Okay, so we were on a horse in Mexico a year ago. But that was a little different because we had a guy like literally walking the horses with us. Right. So it wasn't a true trail ride. I don't remember the last time I was on a horse, but I did ride as a child. I want to say, I think it was nine years ago for me, so. I'm excited, I'm so excited. So Brittany's gonna take us out and we're to see which horse we get. We're taking Kobe, Chewie, and Mr. Holiday out. Caitlin, that was easy. Was Just step up right on. It's like riding a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> that feels pretty good. So this is Kobe, like Kobe Bryant. And he is a gentle giant, I am told. Like my 1,500 pound dog. He's oh. very, very affectionate. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Chewy. Uh, we're gonna be going around the resort and uh, hopefully not falling off. <laughs> Don't do that. That's the goal. <laughs> this is so fun. So, Caitlin, is it like riding a bike? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're just walking, so, you know. I feel like trotting and then galloping is like a whole nother thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful with the clouds like in the mountains right now. It's very ethereal looking. I feel like I just can't stop smiling. <laughs> it's way more entertaining trying to trot. When you're doing it one-handed while filming. <laughs> I'm sure this is probably not in the safety book. <laughs> Can we trot again? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely feel it in my legs. I feel like I need to stretch it out. Uh, how do you feel? I'm actually feeling pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm kind of I'm kind of sad that it's over. I know. They're so sweet. I love horses. That was a great, that was like a one hour. Yeah. It was perfect. It's absolutely a perfect length. Yeah, you go um, in a loop and it's beautiful out there. Yeah, you get to go by um, several creeks. Uh, we got to see blueberries. A beaver dam. Oh, this huge beaver dam. That was so much fun. <laughs> How many different helmets am I going to wear in one day? <laughs> If you're looking for something a little more fast paced, China also offers scenic guided ATV tours, which will definitely satisfy both sightseeing combined with a little speed and adrenaline. What do you think so far? Oh, it's awesome. This is like, it's easy actually. Like I thought it would be a lot harder. I just keep hitting the kill switch. I've done it twice now. We turned around and he wasn't behind us anymore. <laughs> but we, we slowed down and made sure he was good. <laughs> I would just like to go on the record that I'm the better driver. I did not hit the kill switch at all. Howard hit it three times. <laughs> okay, listen, when you're filming and trying to oh, drive I'm, and one, one handed. I was filming and driving a lot too, and I come. still did just fine. Or you can leave the driving up to someone else and take their side by side tour up to the top of Charlie's Dome. The road to get there is very steep, and it's amazing how this thing can climb over the terrain. Are we gonna make it? <laughs> When it's clear, you can pretty much see it. the whole sky is full of green, uh, purple, and yellow uh, when the northern lights do come out. We're right in the middle of the uh, band of the auroras. Just imagine all this is covered by snow, and then the whole greens, purples, and yellows, they're reflecting on the uh, snow. 
at night. It's a very beautiful experience. That sounds awesome. I think we need to come back in the winter. Oh yeah. <laughs> So this pretty awesome looking machine is actually the vehicle that they use to bring you up for the Northern Lights tours. And those start actually this Saturday and they run all winter long and they bring you up to some yurts up here because we were just told that it gets up to, uh, or I guess down to negative 40 degrees. So everybody huddles inside of the yurt and there's a dome on top so they can see when the Northern Lights come out. They set up tripods and then everybody rushes outside, gets a bunch of pictures and then can go back inside where it's nice and toasty <laughs> inside the yurt. But these things look so cool. Look at the, not even tires. I don't know what you call that, the, Howard. Uh, the, the, I don't know. Look yeah. at that. Look just, at it. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta look at it. You just gotta look at it. My excitement is growing because we are heading to a greenhouse. Oh, I see what you did there. Growing <laughs> greenhouse. Yeah, on site here. So China Hot Springs is really a one-stop shop. They both produce their own electricity, but then they also grow their own food too. So we're gonna meet Eric, the manager of the greenhouse operations, to find out how it all comes together. We're the furthest north year-round production greenhouse in the world. Our main crops are lettuce and tomatoes. All kinds of different lettuce. There's butterheads, romaines. So this is all hydroponic, so all the water is flowing through these trays, down in these tubes, it, and then it cycles back around through the tank there. We can control the temperatures exactly in here. Then basically that means that I can get a crop to the kitchen. At, you know, I can always have 2,400 heads every month, and I know exactly how much I can cycle to them. A big advantage is that it's clean, there's no dirt on it. When we harvest these, we'll just pull them right out of here. And then there's roots that these roots will just go to the kitchen. So then these will just sit there in the water so they're fresh. So you're not gonna get day old lettuce. Definitely the freshest lettuce in Alaska <laughs> that you're gonna have. The kitchen regularly uses uh, basil, mm -hmm. wheat basil we're growing, and then Thai basil. So they use the Thai basil and the tomato basil soup. We're growing full size like beefsteak tomatoes, and we're growing grape tomatoes. The blooms are up here. And then we pollinate these blooms by hand, and then slowly they'll set the tomatoes, and then they'll ripen. Then as we lower them, the ripe ones are usually down here where we can harvest. We could bring bumblebees in, but it's a little bit, you know, it's a lot to bring bumblebees in. So we just have one person that has to run around who's the bumblebee. Do they wear a suit? That's all uh, I want to know. It doesn't look like she's wearing the suit today. <laughs> she's not in a bee suit. I'm a little bit disappointed, but I understand. I understand. So you're using the hot water from the hot spring, the same geothermal as what's being used to power uh, everything is what you're using to heat this as well? Yeah, the, the hot water pumps through and then a fan will kick on, blow it off of all these spins. See, if you touch it right now, it's actually warm right now. So... Oh, yeah. It's almost too hot for the touch, but not quite. <laughs> on the property, there's a number of different wells. So there's hot water wells, and then there's injection wells. We don't just like release the hot water into the creek. We go and pump it back down into the ground so it can be reheated. We have a well over here that pumps up 170 degree water. In the wintertime, we're the first building to get it because it's nice and hot, so we can really heat these floors, really heat the walls. And then they'll pump it around up to the, the moose lodge, to the different places where they need the hot water. It was so fascinating to see the process and learn about how they are growing here in Alaska in one of the coldest climates year round. And I had some of those tomatoes, but they are so delicious. I can't wait to try some more of it uh, tonight. So hopefully we're gonna go back for dinner and try the tomato basil soup. I love the idea that it is like greenhouse to table. It's so cool. All right, here's another adventure but of an animalistic kind. So a major part of Alaska is sled dogs and mushing, and they have a kennel here at Chain Hot Springs. And so we're gonna go learn all about the dogs and all about the history behind this and meet some of the pups themselves, which, you know, I'm like thrilled about. I was gonna say, this is probably the highlight for Caitlin. You can adopt dogs from here. I already know how to move. No more dogs in New York. Mushing has been happening all over the world for thousands of years. It originated from Siberia, and over time it spread to the rest of the world. So once it hit Alaska, it was right when they were still mining up here and building the Alaskan Railroad. Alaska State Sport is mushing. It's now all over the world, South America, South Africa, the UK, Scandinavia. The northern route is 1,049 miles. The southern route is just shy of 1,000 miles. So these dogs are all very sweet. They don't know down, they don't know sit, they know trail talk, not house talk. They're very sweet though. They just want to jump up and give you a kiss. 
<laughs> oh yeah, are you posing for the camera? You're so handsome. <laughs> oh, hi. Can you give hugs? Oh, you just... <laughs> Do you see him looking at the camera? <laughs> You're funny. You're a little class clown, aren't you? This is BG. She's up for adoption. She's a good girl. You've been digging. Look at your Look nose. Look at your nose. Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, are you looking for your forever home? There you go, guys. We can't fit any more into the RV, unfortunately. Oh. We have a questionnaire that you fill out to see your lifestyle, um, what that looks like, and if it's okay and matches with the personality of the dog. And then it's free. We don't ask for anything. If you're flying them out, you have to get a crate, uh, make uh, an appointment for Alaskan Airlines. It's a $100 flat rate and then go to the vet to make sure they're cleared to fly. Oh. So you're looking around $150, $200 to take an amazing sled dog home with you. It's pretty cool. And think about it, guys. Yeah, while well, I've been here, we've adopted over six out. And Holly went home to upstate New York two weeks ago. So oh. it's plausible. You know, we adopt the lower 48. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Good dogs. These dogs that are pulling us right now are all Alaskan Huskies. And that really just means mix of a northern breed. So over time, they've been bred on Malamute, Siberian, Samoids with pointers, shepherds, and hounds. For speed, intellect, and endurance. So they have two coats of fur that keeps them warm down to negative 60 degrees. And they have special webbed feet that kind of acts like a snowshoe for them. It allows them to run on top of the snow versus punching through. And the third one is they have the ability to pull three times their weight. So Carhartt and Levi, the two biggest boys right in front of us. Together right now, they're pulling 700 pounds. Up, up, up. Wow, they're amazing. <laughs> Around a corner. Up, up, up. Oh. Woo! Up, up, up. Good dogs. I never wanted kids, and I feel like I have 72. <laughs> I have all the children in the world now. Pretty crazy. They're literally athletes. You know, there's a rule in this community that you don't feed your dogs anything you wouldn't eat personally, and your dogs always eat first. They're in bed, they're tucked away, they're scooped, watered, fed, then we are off, but you're never really off, but it's fine. We all work and live down there. There's cabins that we get to stay in, and at night we can bring dogs in with us to sleep with us, so you gotta be like a crazy dog lover to do this, because you just eat, sleep, breathe dog. I think I might have a new career in mind. It sounds pretty darn good for me. Due to their diet and exercise, I wasn't here for it, but we had a dog last year pass away at 20 years old. They really live long, happy lives. And when we put them up for adoption, a lot of people are like, why do I want to adopt an older dog? But they don't realize they have so much of their life left. Whoa, dogs, whoa. It goes from brains to brawn, she said. So like the strongest, toughest dogs are in the back, but the ones who are the most intelligent are kind of leading the way and carving out the path. You know, as dog lovers, it's really interesting to learn about how much they actually do enjoy doing this. And if they don't want to pull, they don't go. And they're all cared for. I mean, hearing that they get to come inside and actually like sleep with some of the trainers, that just sounds like the ideal job to me. Like I would bring everybody inside my cabin, have a big slumber party. I didn't know they were going to be puppies. Oh my goodness, they're little puppies. Hi! You know, it's kind of... <laughs> I'm glad we did this laundry yesterday. <laughs> oh my god, you're so worth it though. <laughs> so <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> Kaylin, you have mud on your face. What happened? <laughs> you have mud on your jacket, on your jeans. It is very evident. <laughs> My hair. You have been playing with the puppies. Well, it's been raining for two days and you guys know I can't resist puppies. So here we are. Puppy loving is a dirty job. Somebody's gotta do it. I couldn't get it all myself. <laughs> This is love. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to do the cleaning. <laughs> Welcome to the Ice Museum, everyone. If you guys are cold, definitely grab a jacket. It is about 25 degrees in there. Everything that's made inside is made on site. That is our ice carving workstation. That workstation belongs to a man named Steve and his wife, Heather. Heather and Steve Bryce are our ice sculpting champions. I started out as a, a stone sculptor in Fairbanks, Alaska, and uh, uh, I was spending 
five months on a piece that I couldn't sell for the price of the rock. And I started out with ice and I was earning money with it. And the more I did it, the more I enjoyed it. There wasn't too many tools that were available. And so I, I started inventing tools. And uh, the more I did that, uh, the more fun it became. I was doing a competition in 1998 and it was extremely ornate. The owner of the hot springs saw that and he started doing the gears in his head and says something like that might be cool out at Chena Hot Springs. The first one, uh, it was an actual snow walled ice museum. Basically it melted. <laughs> <laughs> right, as things do in the and, summer, and, right? Uh, uh, yes, uh, we gave it a grand effort to try to save it. He finally said, if I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna do it to where it'll go year round. We sprayed a bunch of water on the wall, created uh, ice walls, and uh, started uh, building piece by piece in here. My favorite piece is an alcove on the upper bar. I was in an old time German pub and we were in this alcove that was just its own atmosphere. And I figured I'd recreate that here. I've uh, won 19 world championship titles, been to three Olympics. It's the arts and culture, and it's not a, an actual uh, uh, medal. You get an Olympic medal, but you don't get to walk with the, the groups. And uh, it's uh, snow carving and ice carving. Did Have you a, know that? I had no idea. Yeah, no, it's not widely publicized. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Yeah. It's so cool to see all the artistry and the craftsmanship that goes into all of these amazing pieces. And they're continuing, and that's the thing, it's a living, breathing museum because the ice, as it continues to melt, they have to rebuild over and over again. So what we see today might be a totally different museum in just a couple years. We have two martini maker stations set up. We go through an amazing amount of martini glasses and we have it set up kind of to where it's extremely efficient. We actually run through about 38,000 apple martini glasses a year. This is our ice bar. So if you guys ordered apple martinis, have your slips ready for me and I can serve you guys right away. Welcome to my humble abode. You can even spend a night here in the ice museum if you're feeling adventurous. And you can see here, we've got the bed all set up. It's pretty comfortable. And if you book a night here in the Ice Museum, that does get you a room in the actual hotel in case this is a little bit too cold for your liking. Have yes. people made it all through the night? Oh, yes. Yeah? Oh, yes. This is awesome. I'd do it. Would you guys? Have you the done it? Uh, no, the owner did it, and he wanted me to do that. God's honest truth, I'm not fond of being cold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love what I do enough uh, uh, to where I can live with the cold. Right, but you're not going to stay in here overnight. No. <laughs> the main thing is uh, when people come in, we want them to go, wow. It's a uh, labor of love. Yeah. I'll, I'll say that. And uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It is time to get out of here and warm up. They typically let you spend about 45 minutes in here, and that is a plenty amount of time considering how cold it is. If you want to leave early, they'll always open the door and let you out. But I like to spend the full 45 minutes and uh, drink up. That wraps up the Ice Museum, guys. Don't forget to make a wish and you can launch your cups wherever you guys like. If you don't launch it, it is dishwasher safe. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and see you guys at the Ice Museum again. Where are we? Uh, we were in the frozen Arctic before. <laughs> okay, Lynn, one last cheers. Cheers. Are you gonna make a wish? Yeah, so we're supposed to make a wish slam it and then down. slam it down. <laughs> <laughs> On our next episode, we start the journey to our new destination, and this drive is anything but boring. From hot springs to wildlife, you won't want to miss the adventure. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to come along. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.